May I speak in the name of the Father who created us, the Son who redeemed us, and the Holy Spirit whose gift to the church we remember this day. Please sit. For 20 years of my life, I earned my living by teaching foreign languages. Uh, eight of those years were spent in rural Devon. There was a particular disadvantage teaching foreign languages in Devon because for many people going abroad meant going to Cornwall. <laughs> And another difficulty was that many of the children came from remote farms. And I remember being approached by one boy uh, as to whether he should choose French as one of his GCSE subjects. And I said to him, well, it may not be very useful to you on the farm. And he said, well, sir, you never do know a smite by a herd of Charolais cows. <laughs> uh, on another occasion, there was a parents' evening, and I had to tell a father that his daughter, nice, nice girl, was unlikely to pass GCSE. He shook his head. He said, "'Tis pity. Er do like French, but tis this here grammar, see, or don't seem to understand it, not know how. <laughs> so, passing GCSE in a foreign language is a long, hard struggle. Passing A-level, even more so. But the disciples learned foreign languages like that. And not just one, they learned about a dozen. They learned the language of the Medes, the Parthians, the Elamites. Now, I don't know where Elam was, but I suppose in Elam they spoke Elamite and the disciples learned it just like that. Now, whether we take the story literally, whether we take it symbolically, two messages leap out. First, that Peter and the eleven were bold. That is a word which occurs many times in the early part of the Acts of the Apostles. They spoke boldly. They acted boldly. And the second point is when they spoke, people understood what they said. I'm going to step aside for a moment uh, because the period between today and going back, uh, the ascension has been marked uh, in some parts of the country by a program called Thy Kingdom Come. Uh, I have taken part, myself and others, in this nationwide program. Uh, it started about 10 years ago with a small group committed to saying the Lord's Prayer daily, pausing to emphasize the next sentence, thy kingdom come, and hoping and praying that we would see the kingdom of God come. In that short time, it's grown to becoming a nationwide event with meetings, gatherings, prayer sessions of all sorts. Uh, and there are two booklets which I have been using. First one, uh, common worship, daily prayer for thy kingdom come, morning prayer, evening prayer, night prayer, Compline, uh, and then the prayer journal written and produced by the Archbishop of York, Stephen Cottrell, with quotations, meditations, and spaces where you can write your own comment. I will mention one particular detail because we are urged to nominate in our minds five people whom we know and make a special prayer for those people daily that they may come to know God's love more closely. Now, the Windsor team here has not uh, 
publicly observed this Thy Kingdom Come season, uh, and for the last two years, it has become impossible anyway. I just do hope that there may be some kind of observance next year. Hint, hint. Mm. Uh, now, uh, we go back to the Pentecost story. The gift of the Spirit uh, came, as we've heard, to the first disciples. The gift of the Spirit comes in different forms, different times, different places. To the first disciples, it came with wind and tongues of fire. We may not have that experience. It gave them the gift of speaking foreign languages, the language of the Medes and the Parthians and the Elamites. We may not have that experience, though I will mention that the gift of speaking in tongues <clears throat> was a gift given to the early church from the first days. Uh, and Paul, in his first letter to the Corinthians, gives a whole chapter about the use of speaking in tongues in public worship. And there may be some of you who've had experience at first hand or second hand of the gift of speaking in tongues, or you may not. Uh, we may, we should experience the gift of the Spirit in all sorts of different ways. We should pray, not today only, but at all times, for the gift of the Spirit. Come, Holy Ghost, our souls inspire and lighten with celestial fire. Now, in particular, we may pray for three gifts for us and for the whole church. First, this gift of boldness, a quality of the early church, a quality not so apparent in the church today. Secondly, a gift of language, and I don't mean the language of the Medes and the Parthians and the Elamites, I mean a gift that when we speak, people may understand. And thirdly, the urgent wish that people may come to salvation. Peter spoke with this urgency, so much so that at the end of this story, 2,000 listeners came to repentance and baptism. I remind you of this detail in Thy Kingdom Come, that we should pray for five people known to us, that they may come to a closer knowledge of God. I give those three suggestions, and I might add a fourth one also, the gift of excitement. That was an exciting experience on that first day of Pentecost. The crowd said, what on earth is happening? Some sneered and said, they're filled with new wine. No, it's impossible, said Peter. They can't be drunk. It's only nine o'clock in the morning. Uh, now, any visitor coming to this congregation would not imagine that we're all drunk. Impossible that we should be drunk. It's only half past 10 in the morning. But we may pray for a sense of excitement in our worship. Come, Holy Ghost, our souls inspire and lighten with celestial fire. We may well pray that the fire of Pentecost may lighten us as on that first day in the upper room. And to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all the glory. Amen.